Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In this lesson, we will be reviewing contribution margins, in particular, unit contribution margins. Uh, so uh, if you haven't watched one of our videos before, uh, keep in mind we have access to all of these Google spreadsheets on our website. I'm going to include a link to that in the description. So if you'd like to follow along on your own spreadsheet, go ahead and go to that description and you will find a link to that spreadsheet there. Now, before we jump right into the formula for unit contribution margin, I want to talk a little bit about what a unit contribution margin is. Um, when we're talking about a unit contribution margin, we are finding the amount of every sale that is left over after we've covered our variable costs um, in order to cover our fixed costs and to generate a profit. Now, if you're not comfortable with what variable costs are, you're not really familiar with fixed costs, uh, I kindly, highly encourage you to take a look at our website. We're also going to have some lessons to uh, those different cost behaviors. Um, but again, if you don't know what a variable cost is, I highly, highly recommend that you get a good understanding of that before this lesson. So again, I'll include a link to that in the description also. But uh, let's take a look at an example to see if we can kind of get a good understanding. So a company sells its units for $30 per unit and has variable costs of $17 per unit. So just a brief understanding of what a variable cost is. When we're talking about variable costs, we're talking about the cost that we have to incur for every unit we sell, right? So if I sell one unit, I'm going to end up incurring $17 worth of costs. Now keep in mind, this can go into the cost of manufacturing the item or buying the item if I'm a retailer. This could also include maybe I pay a sales commission to my salespeople, so on and so forth, right? So every time I sell a unit, $17 is automatically eaten up by my variable costs, which means that anything left over goes towards my fixed costs, something like uh, covering my rent. Uh, perhaps I have some salaries that I have to cover, right? So every amount that is left over after covering this $17 variable cost will go towards contribution margin, right? Which is to cover my fixed costs. Now, once my fixed costs are covered, that also means that I get to generate a profit. So when we're trying to understand contribution margin at its most basic level, contribution margin is the amount that's left over when we sell an item that we can use to cover one, our fixed costs, and then two, generate a profit. Okay. So the unit contribution margin formula is very simple. Our unit contribution margin is simply the sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. That's it. So for many of you taking a look at A, you may have already done the math for this one, right? I'm going to go ahead and hide these for now. And get rid of those just so we have a little bit more space on the screen. Okay. So for A, when we're saying A company sells its units for $30 per unit and has a variable cost of $17 per unit, many of you probably already did the math in your head. All right, so first thing is unit sales price. Our sales price per unit is $30 minus unit variable costs. We see that every time we sell a good, we incur $17 of variable cost. And for those of you who are great at math in your head, you already did 30 minus 17, and you found $13. That means every time that you sell a unit, $13 is left over to cover any fixed costs you have. And once those fixed costs are covered, generate a profit, right? So once your fixed costs are covered, every unit you sell, for this particular scenario, you're going to get $13 towards your profit. Uh, let's take a look at B now. That we've kind of gotten our feet wet. B Company plans to sell 10,000 units of their, pro of their product for total sales of 500,000. If the company has variable costs of $35 per unit, what is the company's unit contribution margin? So here we're kind of throwing in a little bit of an extra element, but let's just go piece by piece. Never let these uh, kind of stress you out because really if you break it down to its core components, CVP analysis can be very easy, right? So let's start with unit sales price. So again, that's another term for sales price per unit. So do they give us our sales price per unit? They do not, but they do give us total sales. So I know for all the units I sell, I get $500,000. 
Now, this is where we have to ask, ask ourselves, do we have enough information here to find out the sales price per unit? And we do, because they tell us that we generate this 500,000 in sales when we sell 10,000 units. So we can kind of work backwards to figure out what the sales price per unit is. So $500,000 in sales. If I wanna know what the sale is per unit, I simply divide it by the number of units. So 500,000 in sales divided by 10,000 in units. And before I go on, one thing I do want you to kind of uh, keep in keep in your kind of um, uh, your, I don't know, mental toolbox is that when they say, oh, I need sales per unit, sales divided by units, they say, oh, I need variable cost per unit, variable costs divided by unit. That per almost acts like a little division symbol, in my opinion. So 99% of the time that rule is going to work. Whatever it says in the beginning, divided by whatever it says at the end. So sales price per unit, total sales divided by total units. So we see here that our sales price, we sell each of our units for $50 each, and they gave us our variable cost per unit, 35. So again, let's find that unit contribution margin, $15. Okay. Let's do C. One uh, additional little bonus one. When C company sells 20,000 units, it has a total contribution margin of $4 million. Calculate the company's unit contribution margin. Okay, again, it's not giving us sales price per unit. So let's see, does it give us total sales? It does not. It just gives us how many units we sold. So that's not going to help us. Uh, so for now, we don't really know this one. Let's take a look at the second one, uh, variable cost per unit. Nope, no information for variable cost per unit either. What about total variable costs? Nope, nothing there. So this one, we're actually going to be going all the way to the equal sign. Um, our goal is to find unit contribution margin. They're giving us total contribution margin. So if we want contribution margin per unit, then we're simply going to take the total contribution margin, that's that $4 million you see, and we are going to divide that by total units, contribution margin per unit. So 4 million divided by 20,000, we find that the unit contribution margin is $200 for every unit they sell. So for this last scenario, if you're kind of following, we're seeing, okay, we probably have a higher priced item here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this one here. That way you guys can get a little bit of more uh, familiarity, spend some time really um, absorbing the material that was in this video. I'm going to uh, kind of continue on to part two in the next one where we will be going over that next topic, which is total contribution margin. Okay, so I'll include a link to the description. Uh, I'll include a link in the description below to that video as well. So please make sure that you click on to part two once you're ready. And until next time, happy studying. Good work.